hold on, hold on. Let's do this the proper way. Let's move the keyboard out of the way here. There we go. And let's get this out on a tray. Nice. So, first off, we got a bunch of uh, Phillips head screws. This one might be a bit difficult to get off. You can't really see it, but it's kind of stripped. It's not too bad, but it might be might be an issue. So we get to we gotta take all of these off. Can we just pull these these off? Okay, that came loose pretty easily. Let's put some music on the background. Why not? Might as well. Where's my mouse? There we go. Some nice uh, royalty free music. Let's see, I think I'm gonna need something for here. The tools to fix the tools. That's a 16. I used to have this nice set for all the spanners, but I think I broke it. And now I just have to throw everything into my toolbox. That's always fun to fi try and find the tools you need from your toolbox. All right, that's coming loose. Or is it? What the hell is this thing even? That's some sort of a uh, feel air sensor, is it? I don't know. Put that on the side. And let's get this. I think this is like a fuel pump regulator or whatever. Let's get that off. I think that's 16 millimeter. Nope, that's way too small. 18 maybe. Nope, that's a 19. Got it. <laughs> oh my god. Fucking microphone. <laughs> this is gonna be a fucking nightmare, isn't it? Let's see if I could just set this microphone up here. Let's see, can I zoom in with the camera? That would be kind of useful. Configure the video. I mean, I can zoom a little bit. I guess that's the most I can zoom. All right, well, let's use that. I mean, that's better than nothing, right? Oh yeah, that was, the hose was the issue. So this part will need a proper cleaning. Yeah, that's fucking filthy as hell. Um, let's see if we can get all these bolts off here. Um, it's gonna be tough. Well, not really. I was expecting these to be like stuck. F it's probably the first time anyone's removing these in over 30 years so you kind of expect everything to be completely stuck it's not actually too bad there we go just gotta remember the order of these like the black box here, then this, whatever this bracket is, then the middle bracket, and then the smaller bracket. Oh no. This is gonna be an issue. Do I have a 
I know I have a real proper screwdriver somewhere in here. But am I gonna go and look for it right now? Nope. I'll figure this one out. Let's see. Yep, that works. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm gonna replace all of these bolts with uh, hex hex bolts or Torx. I don't really trust a Phillips head bolt these days. They're way too easy to strip. There's some sort of a uh, terminal for uh, maybe some sort of a grounding loop here. Let's try and keep that safe. I know I'm going to lose it, but <laughs> try to keep or try to hold on to that as long as I can. That's all of those rid of. So this part I'm definitely gonna uh, clean up really well. I, I mean, I think this is alu aluminum, so I could either polish it up real good, like get it mirror mirror finish, or just paint it with. Uh, Let's see here. Maybe like a wrinkle black paint, something. Yeah, let's get these off next. Let's see how stuck are these. <sighs> Not too bad. Oh, that's a little bit tighter. You know what? We've got tools for everything. Yeah, that's a lot easier. So I'm thinking after this, after I've done disassembling these, cleaning up them a little bit, get them ready for uh, paint prep or whatever. Uh, let's let's go play some. Uh, Motorcycle mechanic simulator. <laughs> See how fair, how well the uh, video games fare when you compare them to real life. Keep that bracket safe. There we go. Yeah, these are gonna be super easy to clean up. Um, okay. Now I gotta figure out how these are connected to each other. Just like that, I guess. Okay. So it's just a plate between some sort of a spring-loaded system right there. That's pretty neat. Now, is there any benefit to uh, tearing these apart any more than that? I 
kind of have a feeling that no. All right, everybody. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a um, added bonus material. I had a stream yesterday where I took the throttle body system apart, and I'm I was wondering if I if I'm good enough in taking or disassembling one of these things. Um, at first, I didn't quite want to do it because you know I, I I felt like if I start disassembling these, I I might screw it up. But I had a couple drinks. I was sitting here looking at these things, and I thought to myself, you know, how hard can it be? Like this is it's it's not rocket science, I guess. So I went ahead. I've disassembled two of these now. This is uh, one that I've been cleaning up lately, as you can see. It's still got a little bit of oxidization here and there, because this uh, some of the nooks and crannies that you can't really get into, like especially like here. And um, I've taken a uh, a set of assorted small files with different profiles. I have a little bit of a. Um, I think it's like a brown or red Brillo pad. That works pretty well at taking the mo most of the oxidization off of the flattest part. And if I have a place where I can't really reach, I just uh, I use a file against the against the um, Brillo pad, and I just go carefully around the corners and whatever I want to get. And I've also filed few of the casting marks off from here and there, here, something here, and if there's like notches or something else that like somebody has hit these with something and it has left a notch, I've cleaned those up a little bit. But what I wanted to show you is how to take one of these apart. Uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to touch your idle screw. if your bike works fine, don't touch it. Uh, if it's not broken, don't try and fix it. So basically, these are all pretty much the same. Some of the parts have a little bit more uh, thingamajigs instead of like just a uh, regular spring-loaded system. There's the cable clamp part where your, uh, I think your throttle cable attaches here. but these are all basically the same. The hardest, or I think the, the most complicated part is the end one where the, uh, the actuator is located at. But if you keep, keep focused and take mind of what you do and, you know, take pictures if you need to. I have some uh, video material, so I'm pretty fine with that. Uh, I wanna show you how to take this apart. Now this, most of these have a uh, 11 millimeter nut in here at the end that when you take that apart and you take those two tiny screws in the flap apart and then you just turn this flap around and you can pull the flap out. Uh, this one, it has a uh, sure clip or a locking spring so you're gonna need a pair of tweezers Maybe a, a flathead screwdriver or, you know, a proper tool. I, these are what I happen to have in hand, so I'm just going to use these. So, let's pop the circle clip off, or lock spring, whatever you want to call that. Um, then there's a, uh, there's always a washer, and under the washer, there is this, one of these really tiny... They're kind of like O-rings, but not quite. They have a little bit of a step in them. There's always one of these under there. And then you, of course, you have the flap. So I have a, a small flathead screwdriver. You can use, uh, well, pretty much anything that fits in there. Some of these might be really tight, so you might want to get a screwdriver that fits the, uh, fit, fits the bolt perfectly. Uh, you really don't want to strip these screws, so I almost stripped one, but I was able to salvage it with a little bit of filing. So, 
Let's take the first one out. And keep mindful where you put your screws. You don't want to lose any of these. Because I'm pretty sure losing any of these screws is going to be a pain in the ass to try and get a new one. So here's the second small screw. These are these are really tiny. These are like M M3 and just like four or five millimeter screws with uh what what's it called? You know, the um well, whatever. And uh so yeah, now that the screws are out, uh you can just flick this around so you can get the flap at its side position, right this, and then just pull it out. Uh, there might be a situation where if you can't quite pull the flap out from here, uh, try pushing it out to the other direction. Because these, I'm pretty sure these only come out and go in from either side. Like there's only one way to get these out and in. So I'm just gonna figure out how to get this one out. There we go. Let's see. There we go. And also take care. Uh, keep in mind which way. There's these have like small imprint in them that says number ten. Keep in mind which way these are facing when you take them out, because if you put this the wrong way in, the flap won't turn properly and it won't close properly. So. If you put this in the wrong way around, well, you're gonna have to tear it apart again. So, <laughs> take care of assembling everything like it was put together originally. So now that the, the disc is out, all of this stuff just basically pulls out. You get the, get the rod out. There's another one of these O-rings in here. I'm sorry, my camera won't, won't zoom in for some reason. I have no idea why. And uh, just pop that out. And what I do with, the, like I said, with the cleaning, um, first I remove all these O-rings. And uh, this uh, spring part, you can just pull it off. It's basically hanging loose over the end of the throttle body. So. I go over with the Brillo pad really lightly, well light, lightly, I, I rub it as much as it takes to get the most of the uh, oxidization and grime off and after I'm done with that I have a, a couple files here like I said that I go through any kind of a casting marks, these ridges, there's like a few ridges here and there that, that are from the casting of the part. And you know, I try and make them look nicer. So, filing off all of those, cleaning it up with a Brillo pad. And then I have this stuff that's called it's called AutoSol Chrome Glands. It's uh, mostly for chrome surfaces, but it, this works really well well with all kinds of metals. It doesn't leave a residue. And when I've scr I scrub that in here. Uh, properly everywhere as I can. Uh, I use a toothbrush to get into the heart, re heart areas to reach or whatever and uh, after that I give them a quick rinse with a uh, brake cleaner. Uh, what I have here is a uh, it's called a CRC brake cleaner. Uh, would I recommend it? This is cheap but this is also fragranced so it will probably leave a little bit of residue um, compared to the non-fragranced versions that are a little bit more expensive. Like this is 95% of the active product, but you can get like proper Zippo lighter fluid that works just as well. It's, of course, it's more expensive. So yeah, I give them a, a good wash, clean it up real nice. Uh, then I tape, I taped off all the all the parts like where the pipe fittings come in here uh, all the fuck, what's it called where the fuel is injected through in all that stuff I 
tape that down real quick, real quick, real quick and real good. I'm stumbling with my words here, and uh, then I I gave one of these three coats of a spray paint. This is called some sort of uh, anodized aluminum blue pearl. Looks kind of nice. Uh, the camera doesn't really give it the right color. It looks more blue than it really is. It has like this greenish hue in it. So I gave three coats of that paint for this. Of course, I need to clean up the surfaces that connect to the motorcycle itself. Like there's a whole lot of uh, dripping here, but it's all gonna go. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I wanted to add to the yesterday's streams a little bit. I'm gonna take the key parts out of the yesterday's stream and I'm gonna make put this all into one video that's gonna be out sometime this week. So it's Tuesday now, so I'm thinking maybe Sunday, weekend. But yeah, I think that's it for today's video. Uh, that is it for today. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe, leave a comment. And uh, yeah, leave me tips and tricks and go follow me on Twitch. The link will be in the description. Uh, I'm gonna do a lot more of these cleaning disassembly things on Twitch. So yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next episode.